Yeah, what's up, everybody? We were supposed to go beyond the box score today, but we are pushing that to beyond this week. We'll hopefully do that for you next week. But we still were stuck with Dan, so we're like, all right, we got to get a, an episode going eventually. So Dave joined us, and we've got Dan and Dave here. And these two have not done a podcast together since yesterday when they were on <laughs> the Dynasty Show. What's up, Dan? Schneider? Hey, Dan, if you were at the NFL Combine, what would yes. what drill would you be best at? Which role would I be best? At? That's a great question. Um, be horrible at the 40. I'd be horrible at all the explosive jumps. Yeah. Uh sure. bench press. Bench press would be my best one. That's okay. that's obvious though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you wear any sleeves? The shortest yeah. sleeves possible. So I'll be the guy showing up with no sleeves. Cut I they cut them right off. There you go. Dave Richard, thanks for hopping on today. I know you were not supposed to be on, so thanks for, for uh delivering in a pinch. Well, you were begging me to come on, and I was like, listen, I, I got stuff to do. It's it's combine week, and I'm trying to get through all these player profiles, and you just kept begging and begging, and you <laughs> wore me down, and now here I am. By the way, my best event at the combine, clearly the 1230 a.m. steak and shake run. That's, the, <laughs> that's right there by wherever all the coaches stay at. So that would probably be uh, – I, I bet I'd get a good time in that. Have you guys seen the? I know you might know the name of the place. Saint Elmo is that what it's called? Saint Elmo's. Yeah, I've had. Have it. you seen that massive steak? You've had that. I've had the steak. It looks uh, so good. that big one. I'm talking about that flavor. massive one. People post all over social media when they go. Yeah, to and the shrimp cocktail. Everybody makes okay. a big deal about that. Are too. both amazing, or what's the thoughts on? That? I have no comment. Oh, that's <laughs> not that's not a good sign. But we'll just leave. Well, it or maybe that. it is, and I just don't want to have the rest of the world know about this phenomenal right no it's yeah, clearly yeah. You're, you're keeping it a secret the the one that everyone no knows about <laughs> saint elmo's <laughs> <laughs> all right so what are we doing today we got a lot of news coming out of the nfl combine where the gms and the coaches were speaking so we'll react to that and we're gonna do justify it where dave and dan i'm gonna look at some of the picks they made in last week's mock draft and ask them why dan took amonra st brown over Bijan robinson why dave went running back, running back. And how did that work out? And I looked at every league I was in that wasn't super flex last year. And all the teams that went running back, running back with their first two picks, there weren't that many. And uh, three of them made the finals. And one of us on this show today went running back, running back and won the league. Who was it? Certainly not me. Thomas Schaefer. <laughs> yep, he does. <laughs> Yeah, it's Schaefer. Way to go, man. And and Schaefer was the only one who went running back, running back, and made the finals without Christian McCaffrey being one of those running backs. That's, that's even more impressive. Yeah. All right, so let's do the news and notes here. It appears that no running back will be franchise tagged, although the Giants did not rule it out with Saquon Barkley. <sighs> All right, Giants insider Dan Schneier. Is he going to be on the Giants this year? I don't think so. So I think what's going to happen there is they didn't rule it out, and it makes sense from that standpoint why they. But they're not going to give him the tag because if they gave him the tag, they might as well have just re-signed him last offseason to a long-term deal because the guaranteed money will be pretty close to what they would have given these past few years in guarantee. So he hits the market. That's what they're going to let him do, and then he comes back to talk to the Giants. At that point, I don't know that the Giants are going to be able to make him the best offer. Why wouldn't a team like Houston, who has C.J. Stroud on a rookie contract, and they have, they're saving 30, 40 million at the quarterback position in cap space. They're a young team. Why wouldn't they pay a running back like this? I don't normally think it's a good idea to pay running backs, but when you're in that rookie quarterback window and you have a stud rook quarterback coming up like CJ Stroud, you can get a little bit more aggressive. And I think Barkley could be a really good fit there for Houston. So I think ultimately I'm betting on the Texans signing him, um, coming with a better offer and then the Giants. And those are the two favorites right now in, in the odds. Giants, Texans, Chargers, Cowboys would be your top four, depending on which odds you're looking at. Cincinnati Director of Player Personnel Duke Tobin said that they'd like to keep T. Higgins. They franchised him. They didn't completely commit to keeping T. Higgins. He is expected to stay with the team, but they didn't, I guess, say as definitively as they did last year when they said, if you want a wide receiver, get your own regarding T. Higgins. Uh, Dave Raiders GM Tom Telesco, who was the Chargers GM, he said Devontae Adams is a Raider, but he also said that about Josh Jacobs, who's actually technically a free agent, but he, he was kind of saying like, you know, he's, he's, you know, Jacobs has been a Raider his whole career. But what do you think? Do you think Devontae Adams stays with the Raiders this year? I guess so. I know that they could save some cap space if they, if they trade him, if they cut him. First of all, why would you cut him? He still can contribute in a big way. If they were to trade him, I think they'd save a little bit of space. Cutting him doesn't make much sense. 
I would imagine he's going to be in Las Vegas. He's going to be their number one alpha wide receiver. Whoever their new quarterback is going to be, that'll be someone who could obviously make an impact on Adams ADP. If it's somebody who we really love, say they just somehow, some way they get Kirk Cousins. I'm pretty sure we're going to love Devontae Adams. We're going to overlook the age yeah. thing and go right into Devontae Adams back as a surefire wide receiver one. If it's going to be someone on the level of Aiden O'Connell or a rookie that isn't necessarily someone that we love as a passer, uh, yeah, if it's Bo Nix, I, I think that Devontae Adams could actually slip a little bit further than where he's been going in our mock drafts. And so far, through two PPR mock drafts, Devontae Adams has gone, and I'm talking slowly so I can find the damn thing, 32nd and 19th. So a little bit of some different numbers there, but probably right in the middle, early round three, it's where you would expect to find Devonta Adams with a with a decent to mediocre quarterback. Okay, and the Jaguars, according to Sports Illustrated's Jordan Shipley, the Jaguars want to bring Calvin Ridley back. If they sign him to a deal, they will have to give up a second round pick to the Falcons. If they franchise tag him, it's a third round pick. And if he becomes a free agent, it's a third round pick. So it's not like there's no draft pick compensation. It's going to be a third round pick or a second round pick that the Jaguars are giving up, depending on what they do with uh, with Calvin Ridley. Let's see. A new Chargers GM, Joe Hortiz, said, uh, did not say anything about what they're going to do with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Khalil Mack, or Joey Bosa. They've got four uh, veteran players who are very expensive, and we shall see. I've already heard that Mike Williams is a goner. Mm. That one makes sense, yeah. Yes, huge cap hit coming back from the ACL, older wide receiver. I I could see that. I was stunned by the news earlier that the Chiefs are going to let go of Marquez Valdez Scanling and his twelve million dollar cap space they're saving there. That was the mo- no brainer <laughs> of all no brainers this off season. <laughs> uh, the Falcons released Johnu Smith. Do you think he ends up on the Steelers with Arthur Smith? <laughs> Maybe I think that makes yeah. sense. I think there's a good chance for that. I also think that we are about to see some helium go right back into that Kyle Pitts balloon. I mean, there, there's so many people who've been wanting to get some ounce of juice out of that that have paid a lot, of, a heavy price, myself included. I finally was off the train last draft season, but I was in on the last, the first two. I am gonna have a trouble not getting back in. It. I love my boy Kyle Pitts. Film at Florida was great. He's gonna be so much healthier this year. No, Jonu Smith. Hopefully a regular offense. Hopefully a quarterback upgrade. Maybe Justin Fields. It's going to be tough to not let's, go back. Let's here. let's do the ADP game. It's late round six, and he's on the board. Full PPR. You taking him? No, that's still that's still too rich for my blood. But I think okay. you're going to be well early yeah. draft. That may be what the cost of Anjali is, Dave. Early draft, so you can get him later. He went mid round six and late oh, round five in our first two PPR mocks. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. Then I, I still think that's a little too rich for me. Dalton no, Kincaid or Kyle Pitts. That's the one. Like it, right now, I don't know, depending on what Atlanta does at quarterback, but if there's a significant upgrade, I, I would probably go Pitts. I want to double check my rankings before I give this, but I'm pre, I, yeah, I have Kincaid's top five for me because I'm working under the assumption that he'll be no worse than the number two target getter in Buffalo. Yeah. I'd go Kincaid as of now. Uh, and John, here. John U. Smith, uh, by the way, had 70 targets, which is not insignificant on a team oh, that yeah. didn't much. And he had four more red zone and two more green zone targets than Kyle Pitts last year. Mm-hmm. Panthers GM Dan Morgan, Miami Hurricanes legend Dan Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> Leave Coral Springs, Florida native Dan Morgan. Yeah. Said Chuba Hubbard. I should check that before I say that, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Said uh, Chuba Hubbard is the team's leading running back going forward. Dave, I didn't even see this one. You told me about it. That's Wow. Um, wow, that's, that's a big one, actually. Yes, go ahead. JP Terravella alum, Dan Morgan. I I think that it, this is one of those things where right now Chuba's the guy. Uh, he also mentioned Miles Sanders, but he said that Chuba would be the feature back. Uh, you know, it, this is one of those things where if we go all off season long and the Panthers really don't add anything at running back, then Chuba Hubbard's going to end up being somebody – who matters and maybe even falls into that low end RB two range on draft day for our first two PPR mocks. Oh guys, he went after round 11, both times, no chance in hell that happens if he's the main back for Carolina going into week one. Yeah. And did you hear guys hear what new Panthers head coach Dave Canales said? He said, I'm excited for you guys to see how stubborn I'm going to be with the run game. That was his quote. 
He's excited to see how stubborn he's going to be. He is going to build it through the run game. He did it in Tampa too. Uh, Rashad White got a lot of carries, even though he was not effective as a runner, more effective as a receiver. Chuba Hubbard can also uh, impact in the passing game, and I think there's going to be a focus on Bryce Young on to check down to the running backs in the pass game more to find easy solutions. It really helped Baker Mayfield in his resurgence season. I was watching a lot of Rashad White tape last night because we, I thought we were doing beyond the box score with White, and that – that was a focal point of that passing game, giving Baker Mayfield that outlet at the running back position and creative ways in the passing game. So I think that could work for Chuba or whoever they bring in at running back. And didn't Bryce do a lot of that at Alabama? I mean, yeah. he had Jameer Gibbs, so I kind of yeah. can't blame him for that. And Chuba Hubbard is no Jameer Gibbs, but it would make sense for that to be part of, of the game plan. Yes. Especially for uh, quarterback. Yeah, this, this, is, this is an interesting development, and Chuba Hubbard maybe shouldn't be totally ignored in our best ball drafts between now and April. Okay. Dan Morgan, like, by the way, uh, grew up in Pennsylvania, moved to Coral Springs, Florida. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Another, Wait, win, for the, another win for the Northeast Coast. <laughs> the Northeast Coast. You're taking wins for Pennsylvania, Dan? <laughs> That's a stretch, but I will take a New look. York <laughs> City's <laughs> Ann Schneier, who lives in New Jersey, <laughs> is now stepping up for, you know, what's next? You're, you're going to claim you're going to be all anything over above the Mason Dixon Rich line. Cannon being Delaware. Just anything guys. above the Mason Dixon line. I'll take it. All right. A few more things here. Kevin O'Connell says, the game, Vikings, yeah, well, <laughs> they want Kirk Cousins back. Uh, the Vikings do. Uh, Chicago GM Ryan Poles wants to figure out the quarterback situation as soon as possible. Everyone seems to be bracing for a Justin Fields trade. That well, you saw what happened yesterday, too, right? On that front. I think what so. What, what did I miss? The massive, massive jump from an odd standpoint with the sports books. It went from minus 900 to minus 1600 that Caleb Williams would be uh, drafted by the Bears. And I believe the Justin Fields trade odds also took a massive jump. So something interesting is going on there. All right. Seattle GM John Schneider said that Geno Smith is the quarterback until he's not. Yeah. So that he certainly did not commit to Geno Smith. Um, Carolina head coach Dave Canales, we were just talking about, said he's going to be committed to getting the ball out quickly. So in addition to running the ball, they want to get the ball out quickly and when you have a left tackle who gave up, I think, the most sacks among left tackles in the NFL, I don't blame you. I'd get the ball out quickly, too. Dallas wants to extend basically all of their best players. Dak Prescott, <laughs> Elam, and Micah Parsons. Prescott set to be a free agent after this season. Uh, Baltimore head coach John Harbaugh said that Rashad Bateman will see the ball a lot more in 2024. He's bullish on Rashad Bateman. Is anybody buying that? You mean beyond um, like late-round flyer territory? Enough to impact Mark Andrews or Zay Flowers. The guys could be fourth round picks. Those no, two. I'm I this isn't a high volume passing offense to begin with. It took a step in that direction, but it's not like it's absolutely gonna become like high flying passing offense. And Bateman's teased us before. I don't I don't care if it's round eleven or twelve and you want to get Bateman, go for it. But I'd be surprised if he became a regular fantasy staple. I'm I'm gonna take the opposite side of this one. I like I've, I've just always liked Bateman's tape, and I know the injuries have been a big problem. I'm just banking on the idea that year two in the system, Lamar takes a big jump from a mental processing standpoint. There were flashes of it. Obviously, it didn't carry over into the final games of the season. And there's an interesting stat about Bateman that I found when I was researching Malik Neighbors, who we might talk about a little bit later. Adam and I on FFT and five. Um, for these are all the wide receivers who had early draft declare status, first round draft capital, and at least three and three point five receiving yards uh, of the like by team. So in their peak season, so essentially like dominated the receiving production on their team. It was Des Bryant, OBJ, Mari Cooper, Malik neighbors, CD lamb and Rashad Bateman. So it's just an interesting group to be in. He dominated that, that team, uh, that Minnesota go uh, the yardage on the Minnesota Gophers team. It, I don't know if they'll ever be like five anything years dominant. Ago. I know it was a long time ago. I don't know if there'll ever be anything dominant, but if I can envision a step forward from Lamar, from a processing standpoint in that system, and I know they want to be passed first. I can see a scenario where he can he can take a step forward because we know it'll Beckham is probably not coming back. I would doubt he's coming back, signed the one year deal. So there are there is potential for more targets as well behind Zay. All right. Washington offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury, former Cardinals coach, he basically said that it's going to be a different offense. They're going to be more balanced. Here's where the Cardinals ranked in running back rush attempts in four seasons with Kingsbury yeah. and Kyler Murray. And that's it's hard with Kyler Murray. You know, he steals a lot of the rush attempts, but. 32nd, 19th, 18th, and 30th. So they didn't give the ball to their running backs all that much on the ground. Texas running back Jonathan Brooks should be cleared by training camp, according to Ian Rappaport. He's one of the, 
top running back prospects. He tore his ACL late in the season. And a couple more of defensive notes. The Chiefs could use the franchise tag on the Jarius Sneed, but they also seem open to trading him. And Tampa Bay will release linebacker Shaq Barrett. All right. Hey, it's fantasy baseball season. I've been watching spring training. I'm fired up. I'm get Rodon, get Cortez. Those are the only guys I really know because they're on the Yankees. But I'll know a lot more. I'm going to start binging my fantasy baseball today podcast pretty soon. Position previews are out there. If you don't have time, you can also check out Fantasy Baseball Today in five. But they do a great job. If you miss Chris, he's on uh, FPT. So Frank Stample, Scott White, Chris Towers. Fantasy Baseball Today, the best fantasy baseball podcast in the world. Guarantee I do very well because of that podcast exclusively. That podcast and what I read on the website. So check out Fantasy Baseball Today. It is commercial break time. When we come back, justify it. Dan's t-shirt sizes. Uh, and more when we uh, when we come back we'll be justifying after this we need your sports news anywhere we've got breaking news to bring you then get your sports anytime you want them big trade news overnight to discuss because we know you need sports all the time a lot of movement in the rankings this week a legend adds to their legacy we're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ CBS Sports HQ anywhere anytime all the time so we did a PPR draft very recently. And Dave Richard had the 12th pick. Dan Schneier had the eighth pick. And we'll uh, take a look at their teams and some of their picks and, and make them justify it. It was a one QB league where you start two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex. Dave's starting lineup will be CJ Stroud, Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams, Amari Cooper, Mike Evans, Cortland Sutton, Dalton Kincaid, uh, and then either Joe Mixon or James Conner at flex. Um, his bench has either Joe Mixon or James Conner, Romeo Dobbs, Demario Douglas, Jake Ferguson, A.T. Perry, and Trey Tucker. All right, Dave, three receiver league, full PPR. You had the 12th pick. Uh, off the board were at wide receiver, Jefferson, Lamb, Hill, Chase, St. Brown, Puka, and A.J. Brown. That's a lot. At running back, McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs, and B. John Robinson. You, first thing you got to justify is going running back, running back. Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams. Justify it. Two highest rated players on my board. And the, the move that I did in this draft, because let's face it, this is a mock draft. There's no rookies. Free agency hasn't started yet. This is really not the time to get serious with like strategies. So I'm trying to like – Test out strategies. And this one was strictly going with best available player every step of the way. And so when I was up, those were the top two names on my board. I do think that there's a case to be made, even in a three receiver league, where if there are two running backs that you're just absolutely in love with, you're going to find out pretty quickly. Number one, this year's draft class at running back, there isn't a lot of great talent there. There's a lot of good talent, but there isn't a Bijan, there isn't a Jameer Gibbs. You've got a lot of guys that are going to be part-time backs. There's maybe two guys that could eventually become full-time running backs. One of them, Jonathan Brooks, is coming back from a torn ACL. I think you'll find it's top-heavy with running backs this year. So locking in two of the first three, something like that, with your first three picks, getting two running backs, I don't know if that's the worst idea in the world. And second of all, I, I, I think Taylor and Kyron Williams are studs. I think they've got potential to be top-five running backs. We've seen Taylor finish as an RB1 before. Kyron was RB2 this past year, I think. So getting those two and picking over the rest of the wide receivers that were there. If A.J. Brown had made it back to me, I think A.J. Brown would have been on my team, but he didn't. So I went with the two running backs, and I just figured that I'd be able to find some good wide receivers later on. That did not happen. <laughs> well, that's, you know, you took Mike Evans and Amari Cooper in rounds three and four, and we'll talk and about they're that. they're okay, but neither one of those guys should be a number one wide receiver. Yeah, but I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but last year, let's say you had the 12th pick last year. I'm just looking at our fantasy football today league. Uh, 12th and 13th picks were... You mean a, a draft that we did after free agency, the NFL draft, mini I'm camp, and training camp. A real draft that we did last year okay. in August. Um, our FFT league is probably in early September. Travis Kelsey and Devontae Adams were the 12, 13 picks from Will Brinson. Um, you had Garrett Wilson, CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Waddell, 
uh, go in the second round. T. Higgins and Devontae Smith were the last. Lamb did not go in. Oh, you mean last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about uh, draft okay. last year. Anyway, I, I, what I'm trying to say, crazy. I just want to know how you feel about the wide receivers in the second round. If if Puka's not there, I think he will be in a lot of leagues. If AJ Brown's not there, they went ten and eleven in this league. You know, he went ta- he went Taylor and Kyron. Dave went Taylor, Kyron Williams. But the next wide receivers off the board were Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Rasheed Rice, Devontae Adams, DJ Moore. So Dan, would you have done anything differently there? Um, it's tough to say because I I think my lean is so heavily toward wide receiver in this format, uh, especially early on with draft early draft couple. I probably would have done something differently, but I was the was the example you brought up before. I was trying to rack my brain to remember this of Thomas winning this league. Was that in full PPR or was that a different format? It wasn't this league? Oh yeah, it, obviously it's not. Um, but it was that full- league. I think it was half PPR. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. I'm just in full PPR. I'm a little more skeptical of of the start. I always like my RB RB teams on draft day and they almost never work out. And I think it's, you know, of the teams that I looked at the seven teams that I looked at in my leagues that went RB RB three of them were great, but two of those had McCaffrey mm-hmm. and you know, like I took a, one of the leagues was me. I took Saquon Barkley and Tony Pollard. I went five and eight. One of the leagues was Dave. He took Austin Eckler and Jonathan Taylor and Taylor was kind of interesting, right? Cause he, we didn't know if he was going to play and, and this and that. Yeah, I obviously and, didn't use him as a starter. Dave went seven and seven. The of the year. Right. Uh, Jamie did RB RB in one league. Eckler and Chubb, he went five and nine. Dan was the only team that wasn't terrible or great. He was average. He had the five seed in a league. He went, uh, uh, I don't know what his record was, but he lost in the first round of the playoffs. He went uh, Bijan and Ramondre Stevenson. It was a reach. It must have been an early draft. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was actually that was the league that Thomas won. That was our magazine league. So yeah, actually that was an early early draft. Yeah. Um, but I it never works out for me. But I don't know. I I can't sit here and say that I like the strategy, Dave. But I also can't sit here and say that you should have taken Garrett Wilson with an aging quarterback coming off an Achilles, Chris Olave, who hasn't hasn't done what we want right. to do yet, or Rasheed Rice, who you know is very uncertain as a top 15 overall pick, you know, 13th overall is where you would have had to take it. I can't say you made a bad pick because I don't love the guys going after. Maybe DJ Moore is the most proven Stefan Diggs, but you know, he's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that there's a player. Yes, that's I bad. know exactly what you're saying. That's why I took two running backs with my first two picks. That's going to be a conundrum for people. And right now, the way things look, I want an early pick. <laughs> yes. hundred percent this year. Or, you know who I kind of want David? How about this? Crazy. You couldn't do it in this league. Jonathan Taylor and Marvin Harrison. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't work out in this league, but I think that's also a little too rich. Well, let's see where Marvin Harrison lands first. All right. Uh, Dave, justify it. In rounds three, four, after taking Taylor and Kyron Williams, you took Mike Evans and Amari Cooper. You took two old receivers there where you still had on the board T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, and Michael Pittman went right after that. Maybe mm-hmm. would you mix it up next time and go old young? I think I might mix it up next time and go old young. I'm not sure which young guy I would take though. It would probably I, I like Devontae Smith. I think he's an awesome talent. Jalen Hurts is a good thrower. I like that Kellen Moore is now in Philadelphia. Could lead to more throwing. We don't know what Philadelphia is going to do at running back. Again, these are all questions that we'll have a lot of answers to by the time we get to August. So it was a little bit harder to make that call in a draft in, in mid February and Pittman's going to be back with Anthony Richardson. I didn't love his production when Richardson was on the field, a little bit nervous about him getting 10 targets per game. When Anthony Richardson is going to be his quarterback, that number is going to go down a little bit, but I, I looked at Evans and over the last three years, he's averaged at least 15 PPR points per game. Last season, it was 17 plus. I don't think he's going to get back to 17 plus, even if Baker's back, even if he resigns in Tampa Bay, even if everything's perfect in Tampa Bay, I think 17 PPR points is a little too rich, but I think 15 is right in there. And last season when Deshaun Watson played, there were five games. Mark Cooper was around 17 points per game. So I'm taking a chance on two older wide receivers. No question about it, but they've been productive. They're good players. And I don't think they're about to fall off the age cliff quite yet. All that being said, I probably still should have gone with like Evans and Smith if I could do it over again. 
And I, I the other thought in my head is, do you think Marvin Harrison would have made it this far? Because if Maybe. he had made it this far, I would have raced to take him there. One other option I want to get your thoughts on. So you start Taylor and Kyron Williams, then you go Evans, Amari Cooper. I think at this point you can expect you're not picking again for another two full rounds, which would be the 60th overall pick. You're not getting a top four tight end if you wait to 60. At that point, Kelsey and Laporta, I believe, were off the board. Yes, they were. But Andrews and McBride were on the board. Do you think going back, so, you know, you start with two running backs, you need to start three receivers. You go Evans and Cooper. We talked about maybe go younger at wide receiver. What about wide receiver tight end and locking up a top four tight end? Not in a three wide receiver flex league. I really felt like I could, like, I almost, I almost painted myself into the corner, especially after rounds five and six of waiting on quarterback, trying to get a good value. At least I shouldn't say waiting because it's not like I wait, waited until round 11 to get Stroud. I got Stroud in this thing, right? Uh, yes, you yes. did. In, uh, we on? Round eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I think I got Stroud and Kincaid at excellent values a little bit later on. And so I I, I just, I just kind of told myself I would wait until I could get a good value on tight end. I don't think that that's a great value for, at least not at this point, for Andrews and McBride. Fair value, sure. But like 37th overall for one of those guys, I feel like I could do a little bit better than that. All right, let's go to our next justify it. Oh, uh, and I think I did a lot of research on old wide receivers, 30 and older, 31 and older. Um, I'm going to save it for another day. It's, it's oh, interesting yeah. stuff. It's uh, a big Jamie talk. Jamie's big on that as well. He was That was one of his ten, tenant pole issues last, last offseason, some of the receivers he was avoiding. Yeah, no, he's he's adamant about it this season. Um, about, about Joe Mixon and James Conner at the 5-6 turn. That is best four. available. It yeah. is that is simply that there was I was targeting Christian Kirk. Oh, listen to this. So Jamie was picking in front of me. He took Burrow and then he backed it out and took Christian Kirk. <laughs> and so, like for a second, I was like, okay, this is great. Christian Kirk is my third wide receiver. I can live with that. And then he ended up taking Kirk. Uh, who was my next favorite wide receiver? I, I don't even know if I had one that I even really liked at this point. Pickens, Hopkins, I, yeah, Godwin, these, maybe. I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't leave. And these are old players too. And at running back, it's worse than wide receiver. But again, productive guys that have put up points, Mixon and Connor. And so I just took them. They were the best available players. And it, I'm doing one of the things that just I hate. I hate it when people draft players and they go, "Well, no, I don't have to worry about it. I can make a trade later." Well, number one, you don't want to. You don't want to like try and force that because you're never going to get what you want in trade. And number two, it's older running backs anyway. It's not a good look. It doesn't feel great. The only silver lining that I got is that I'm rich at running back. And since I've got two older running backs, I don't have to start both of them. I don't have to freak out about them being old and both of them being in my starting lineup. Mm -hmm. And I can just use one of them each week, whichever one I like better. And hopefully Taylor and Kyron Williams continue to put up numbers. That was my thinking at the time, but ultimately it was these two guys should have been taken already. We're at the end of round five, beginning of round six, or that's what it was, right? Or end of round. Yeah. Yep. And around five, beginning end of around five, five, beginning around six. These guys should have been taken already. At least Mixon should have. All right. Fair enough. And look, you can't, it's a mock draft. You never know how it's going to play out, but there is something to be said about just having the best players and not reaching for someone at a position that you need. So Dave does draft a bench player before filling out, tight end quarterback and wide receiver three. So how did he do there? Those were his next picks at the seven, eight turn. He goes Dalton Kincaid as the seventh tight end off the board. Hawkinson and Pitt were drafted. To me, that was a steal. That made me feel a lot better about things. And CJ Stroud as uh, let's see. Tight quarterback one, two, three, four, five. I think also seventh or eighth. I think the eighth quarterback off the board. Uh, C.J. Stroud. So my question for you was actually later in the draft, you drafted Jake Ferguson as a backup to Dalton Kincaid instead of Brock Purdy or Kirk Cousins or Deshaun Watson as a backup to C.J. Stroud. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not questioning everything Dave, Dave's doing. I'm just looking for explanations. I'm not saying he did nah, you should You should question the running backs. That's okay. <laughs> Jake Ferguson to back up your tight end uh, ahead of Brock Purdy, who was like an MVP candidate, 
to back up your quarterback, why'd you take Ferguson over Purdy? Just value, positional scarcity, figuring that Jake Ferguson, who was already the number two target getter in Dallas last season, could do it again this season. And I thought it was good value. And you, na- how many quarterbacks did you just name that were still on the board? It was Purdy. It was Cousins. Who else? Watson and Russell Wilson. But they were not yeah, on the well, board. Wilson was never going to be the pick. And they were Watson not on. Was be the pick but they weren't on the board with your next pick. Is what I'm saying. Like they were gone. Okay, that's fine. And I, I still believe that that's the one position in a one QB league where you don't have to prioritize getting a backup. If there's one that's a good value later on, of course. I thought the better value was Ferguson. How about you, Dan? What's the better value, Jake Ferguson or Brock Purdy? Uh, in a one QB league, for me, it's Ferguson. I don't value backup quarterbacks in one QB. You can find some of those guys off the waiver wire, and you right. can do it with. Listen, you could do it with every position, and that's if we were to play this league out, it's absolutely what I would hope for a wide receiver. I would hope you know, that some wide receiver comes out of nowhere and boosts my team, and that I could find them off the waiver wire. All right, there's, there's. I did not draft Justin Herbert. Yeah, no, I saw that mistake earlier. I was hoping something, something weird happened there because you had, would have had three quarterbacks. What I drafted. What yeah, I was like, I know I draft a lot of quarterbacks, but um, no, Dan think, drafted Herbert. Yeah, it must have been Khalil Herbert. No, I didn't draft him either. All right, just put an NA for <laughs> now. Uh, we'll figure it out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everyone to know if you're watching that I did not draft three quarterbacks. I I did draft two. What um, round is this? If you're watching on YouTube, there's like a big random white wait, space I, on the draft board. I think that my team and Dan's team might be switched, so or or some of the picks anyway. So we're gonna have to not a good we'll sign. at a commercial break. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a break, and um, it's Khalil Herbert because Jordan Love was the pick before at 94. Khalil wait, Herbert went to you, Adam. I at 95. Up. Yeah. And I didn't James take Williams, That's Robert. all it is. It's, it's just, it's right. Okay. It's just Khalil Herbert. That's it. That's <laughs> Khalil it. Herbert. Khalil Herbert instead of Justin Herbert. I was looking at uh, Schaefer had everything right except one name. Khalil Herbert. Thank Never you. Never doubt Schaefer. Why were I, you doubting him in the he, first he, place? He nailed it. He nailed it. Um, all right. We're going to take a break and I'm going to tell you something that my best friend just did to me via text that is I find extremely rude. Uh, oh. I'll get your thoughts on it. And we'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Wake up to football highlights and news from around the world with the one and only Morning Footy Team. Rise and shine, football fans. Welcome to Morning Footy. Start your all-day football craze with Morning Footy, part of the all-new Galazzo Network. Okay, I just got a text message from my best friend. He texted me, my wife. What did your mom have to say? He, he, texted, <laughs> he texted me, my wife, and two strangers. Okay. He is basically, it's a couple, it's a young couple who just moved into my neighborhood or near me. Oh, he's setting us up. Oh, that's terrible. I don't have a problem with this, but he didn't give me a heads up. That's what I'm saying. To do it without a heads up is terrible. Obviously, you don't have a problem with it. If he talks to you about it first, he lets you know, hey, young couple, they need friends. I'm going to set you guys up and then that's fine. And you could you could say like, oh, no, I'm busy right now. I have stuff going on with the kids. This is not a good time for it. But if he just bombards you with it out of nowhere. Yeah. That's devastating. Terrible move by him. Devastating. It is because now Adam's stuck being nice and being like, "Yeah, let's do it." And we have no, to I'm do happy it. to do it, but I, I really, I'm going to give him a hard time for this. You cannot. Yeah, you want to do it on your own terms. You're happy to do it on your own terms, not his terms. <laughs> exactly. You cannot put me on a text with two strangers. Crazy That's the stuff. first time you're telling me about this. Yeah. Wow. And you, you just moved up on my friend list. You are Good. you're creeping close because he's moving down and you're moving up. I don't know you're how this was your best friend in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I've known him since um two, I think. Okay. Mommy and me, we met. He's a good guy, I guess. Not today, though. Not All today. right, and justify it. You had the eighth overall pick, and you took Amonra St. Brown ahead of Bijan Robinson. Amonra St. Brown, the fifth receiver off the board. Bijan went with the next pick as the fourth running back off the board behind McCaffrey, Brees Hall, and Jameer Gibbs. But uh all right, justify it. St. Brown over Bijan. Yeah, full PPR to me. This one's probably one of the ones I'll have to least justify. To me, it's all almost a no-brainer. We got a Monroe St. Brown two seasons in a row in the same system. Ben Johnson returns. Uh, it's not only what he does within the system, but it is partially that because Ben Johnson really does a great job of scheming Monroe St. Brown open. And now with the news that Jameson Williams might be 
might, well, he has to earn it, but might earn himself a full-time role. I think it's going to open up even more space in the middle of the field for Mon Ross St. Brown and for Ben Johnson to just do more unique things to get him open. And that's really a lot of what their play action passing game is based on. So there's such a high floor here from a volume reception standpoint. Targets are what I chase. I don't chase touchdowns in fantasy because the touchdowns are grass. So I'm looking for volume PPR. Monterey St. Brown to me was a no-brainer. I actually think that the only other player I considered here was not Bijan Robinson. It was Puka Nakua. Um, but I just, to me, I, I would prefer a Monterey St. Brown. It's a longer sample size. And, you know, there's not a Cooper Cup potentially waiting in the wings to, to take away those targets. Is that for any type of format or is it specifically a three wide receiver deal? Like if this for were me, a two wide receiver, yeah. one flex league, are you still taking St. Brown? Old time fantasy, no, like two, three, four years ago, no. But in the last two years of fantasy football, this wide receiver, and I'm looking at this draft board, and this as you went over your team, Dave, I, this really stood out to me. The yeah. wide receiver depth just isn't what it used to be. Like you just get really dry, really fast at wide receiver, even in round five, but especially when you get into the rounds where it's like Jahan Dotson, we see coming off the board, right? Like DeAndre, like we're really getting dry at that position, and at times. When I get to the middle rounds, I like running backs over receivers. And I know you took a pair that you just felt like we're the best on the board at the time, Mixon and Connor. And I don't blame you for that. So I want to get my receivers early. So I don't think it would change in recent times. If the NFL starts to figure out how to beat these two high looks and we start to get more passing and more consistency, that could change for now. I find receiver to be scarce. So I want to get them up top in my drafts always. Okay. Uh, Dave, real quick, would you have gone Bijan or St. Brown? This is where I think roster requirements plays a huge role. I think they're very close to each other. The fact that Amon Ra averaged over 20, just over 20 PPR points per game last year and has been consistent now for three seasons, and he's been really, really ever since Ben Johnson took over in 2021 as the play caller in Detroit, St. Brown has caught fire. And so in this format, three wide receivers and a flex, I don't mind the pick at all. I think St. Brown over Bijan makes sense. But if it's two running backs, two wide receivers, I might go. And I disagree with Dan. I, I think running back gets even uglier as you move down the draft board. Wide receiver, I think I, I think both those positions, honestly, will get ugly by the time you get to round seven. But I think running back will get uglier before wide receiver. And so if it's only two wide receivers that we're starting – I might have taken Bijan over St. Brown in my rankings where it's not based on any type of specific lineup requirement. I've got Bijan one notch ahead of Amon Ra, but in the three wide receiver set, I don't mind Amon Ra over Bijan. All right. And finally, on this topic, which start do you like better? Team eight, Dan's team, Amon Ra St. Brown and Saquon Barkley, or team nine, RJ's team, Bijan Robinson and Rishi Rice? Would you rather have St. Brown and Barkley or Bijan and Rice? St. Brown and Barkley. I, I can't answer that because obviously my answer would be St. Brown and Barkley as I drafted it. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, justify it. Saquon Barkley in round yeah. two instead of Devon Achan or Travis Etienne. Yeah, I definitely considered both of those two players that you mentioned. I also considered DJ Moore here. I was considering going up top with Nico Collins and taking a, a risk on that one. And Stefan Diggs, to me, I still think is kind of being slept on early in drafts. I know it was a bad end to the season, but there is possibility there that Gabe Davis is gone and they just go through the draft to try to, you know, fill out the rest of that wide receiver room. And that could really help Diggs. But ultimately, I went Barkley on an upside play here. Again, I feel very good about the idea and just makes so much sense that Barkley will go to the Texans. And I think a lot of people, when they look at that, say, oh, look at Barkley's production running power gap behind power gap scheme versus his production behind zone scheme. And it was better with the Giants behind power gap. But part, part of that is because the Giants had some creative plays with power gap that got guys pulling and got sniffer tight ends in the, in the mix like Daniel Bellinger to make big plays. And they're just well-designed power gap plays. As far as the zone goes with the Giants, the Giants offensive line was not good and was not cohesive. So, of course, zone wasn't going to work. The Texans, year two of this Slowick offense, are hopefully, we we hope with, in, with the injuries being a better situation there and maybe some additions they can make, going to be a more cohesive offensive line blocking outside zone. 
And I think Barkley's shown over the last two years, he's been much better at getting vertical early and not bouncing as many runs outside. So I kind of like the fit a lot in that slow system. But that doesn't even add to the fact that Barkley would be playing with, by far and away, the best quarterback play of his career with C.J. Stroud. Nothing even comes remotely close to what he's got from Daniel Jones or the last year, Eli Manning. In addition to a system that just creates space in the passing game and creates space on the field and forces safeties to play further back than they played against the Giants. So, yes, this is a lot of projection, this pick. It's hoping that Barkley becomes a Texan, <laughs> and I don't know where else he could potentially go. I think it's probably Texas or Giants, and if he, if he does resign with the Giants, obviously I'm going to be regretting this pick, but right now I feel good about taking that upside swing there. And the two players behind Jay, you mentioned, Adam, Travis Etienne, I was low on him last year, and I was wrong about that, but I do feel like looking at the way he faded down the stretch, I'm not feeling so great about him going into this year. And then Dave, Devon A. Chain, who we talked about, and we were going to talk about on Beyond the Box Score, there's still just some quirks within his profile, overall fantasy profile, like for, as far as volume goes, that have me a little bit hesitant versus a player like Barkley, who I know can, can has taken on that volume so many times um, and potentially would be that again if he signed with a good team like the Texans. Dave, if Saquon Barkley goes to the Houston Texans, would you take him or Travis Etienne or Devon Achan? I think after, after what Dan had to say, I'd take DJ Moore. <laughs> I, mean, I just... You can find flaws with all three of those running backs, yeah. and we're going to talk about their flaws no matter what. And DJ Moore potentially could end up being the the one B wide receiver in Chicago. Who knows that how that'll play out? But for now, I, I, I it almost makes me want to just avoid that whole Hornets nest yeah. and go with DJ Moore, especially going back to the format and how you know every single mock that we do, it's three wide receivers in a flex trying to lock up a wide receiver one as my wide receiver too, because Dan, you took St. Brown already with your first round pick. But to answer your question, I think I'd lean toward ETN just because a little bit younger, yeah. had a great year, did not finish strong, but definitely could put together a complete season in his third year in Jacksonville. Um, HM, we just don't know how much work he's going to ultimately get, how healthy he'll stay. Saquon in Houston, I still feel like they'll use another running back and it won't be Saquon as an every down 70% of the snaps type of a guy. Saquon in L.A. with the Chargers, that could be a different story. And that's a power gap running offense as well. So that could be an even better spot for Saquon if he went there. But for now, put me down for ETN, but he's got flaws just like Saquon does and just like Achan has. So, Dan, with the eighth pick goes St. Brown, then Barkley, and then Jalen Waddle in round three. And then let's justify it in round four. Where you took Ken Walker, and you took him instead of – the guys that I'm going to point out that maybe you could have taken over him okay. are a different position. Josh Allen was still on the board. We didn't have a quarterback selected yet. and You did take Justin Herbert in the seventh round. He's your only quarterback. Um, you could have taken Mark Andrews. You could have taken Trey McBride. But you took Ken Walker instead as your RB2 with the fifth pick of round four. Justify Ken Walker over Josh Allen, uh, Trey McBride, and Mark Andrews. Well, I actually look at this pick, and and um, and as we go through this, Adam, I am somewhat regretful of these of some of these picks. Barkley, for example, is a pick I regret looking back at it, and and Ken Walker is a pick I somewhat regret i should say and it's not because of the guys you mentioned the only player you mentioned who i regret maybe taking him over would be josh allen um, but i don't really feel in a one quarterback league like for the most part i i want to be re taking quarterbacks with these early round draft capital i did it last year in some of our one qb leagues it somewhat worked out if i got josh allen it didn't work out when i got justin herbert it didn't work out when i got joe burrow and it somewhat worked out, I would say, with Lamar Jackson. I'm not sure, so sure he made that much of a difference at times. Obviously, there were good moments of Jackson, but there weren't. Oh, it wasn't all pretty. Trust me, with Lamar Jackson in the early round yeah. draft capital last year. Yeah. What'd you say? No, oh, you're right. Yeah. I, I think so. I, it just didn't feel like it. Like I want to go back down that route. As far as the other guys you mentioned, I would never take Trey McBride in round four personally. I'm not a huge fan of his difference making talent. I think he's great at the catch point, can extend away from frame. I, I think his fantasy value is determined by will the Cardinals run that same exact system with that kind of heavy volume toward him, or will they upgrade at wide receiver or do different things on that offense? And I think they're going to upgrade big at wide receiver in the draft with their first round pick, and that's going to change that. Now, as far as Andrews goes, that one I considered, but I still think that offense is just too much spread out. It's not it's not a lot of you know concentrated volume like it used to be for Andrews. Now, the picks I regret somewhat are Zay Flowers. I think could have a really big jump in year two. I'm looking at him now. He was still on the board. 
Um, and then potentially Tajay Spears, running back who I watched tape for last night for Beyond the Boxer. We'll talk about him whenever that happens. And I just loved what I saw. But Walker to me is another guy whose tape stands out, Adam. And I just think that he's such a he's such an explosive runner, and he gives you so much upside if he now you worry about Zach Sharman, I understand that, but if they still lean on Walker as the as the one A at the very least in that offense. And there's a lot of there, there's just a lot of upside for me for him as an individual runner. I think there's some risk here. Obviously, I just mentioned some of that. So I regret it. Looking back, I probably would have gone Zay Flowers if I could have done this over. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at with this. Well, then justify this. How do you take Zay Flowers over Mark Andrews? I don't I mean, why why are we so sure Mark Andrews should be going over Zay Flowers? Well, we've seen how good of a tight end. Mark Andrews, big look, Zay Flowers, I would expect to have more numbers, you know, be- better numbers. But then obviously it's does he stand out at the wide receiver position like Andrews does at the tight end position? I think the touchdowns would I know you say you don't project touchdowns, you chase targets, whatever. But Andrews is like a proven scorer, a proven red zone, green zone, end zone. Before scorer. Isaiah likely got there, though. Likely has been a big part of their red zone since since he got there, even in the playoffs. Uh, no, not when not when Andrews has been healthy. I, I, if you think likely he's going to have a role, I, mean, I just don't. I, I agree with that, but it's just like I don't really care about anything stats wise or trends wise from before this offense changed because it's so radically different with Todd. Yeah, then just use this offense, and Mark okay. Andrews was was Zay Flowers was invaluable until Mark Andrews got hurt. Yeah, but that's also because he's a rookie and he's getting involved in the system. I also don't really like that system changed and evolved so much throughout the season, and I think it's going to change even more in year two. Okay. All it's right. a projection. I just see that Zay Flowers having a really good year within that system. I, I think the system. only argument is that you think Zay Flowers emerges as a top 15 to top 10 type yes. of fantasy wide receiver, and you can pencil him in for 15 PPR points per game. If that's what you're thinking, that's then thinking. you take him over Andrews. Uh, Andrews, to me, like I think he's the floor play, kind of like what Adam was getting at, safe, and certainly somebody that gets a lot of attention from Lamar Jackson, regardless of what the offense looks like. Earlier in the year, he got plenty of targets. In the past, before Todd Monken got there, plenty of targets, especially considering how that limited sure. this offense threw the yeah. ball. So that, to me, it's a ceiling versus floor play between those two Ravens. All right, yeah. let's go to our next justify it for Dan. Um, I have a few here, so I'm going to try to... How about Justin Herbert instead of C.J. Stroud? Yeah, this is an interesting one. I I rely on how I feel about Herbert as a quarterback. And if you look at last year, I had a lot of Herbert shares. It was going great for a while. It looked like a great pick in round four um, until it didn't. And a lot of injuries happened at wide receiver, the offensive line. And of course, Austin Eckler wasn't at 100%. Now, the risk here and why I'm somewhat regretful of this is just what will happen with Jim Harbaugh there? Will this offense be so run heavy that it will affect Herbert? But I actually kind of think that getting Herbert back under center and having him run play action and taking deep shots off of play action uh, and using utilizing his arm in that sense a little bit more of a power play action passing game could help him from just a maybe not from a volume standpoint, but from an overall touchdown standpoint. So I'm just banking on the I was looking at I was between Herbert, Love and Stroud here um, and and I was banking on the idea that there's a little bit less risk to me in Herbert's profile because Stroud year two rookie quarterbacks. We, it's not, I'm not saying it's going to happen to Stroud. He's a phenomenal talent, but we have seen examples and this happens in the NFL when de- defense quarterbacks always say, when I get eight games of film on one quarterback, things change. And we've seen that happen for a lot of quarterbacks who were flashes in the pans as a rookie and just couldn't keep it up in year two. And that's not going to happen for CJ Stroud, but I just want to put that out there. Same thing for love. There's a lot of tape now on what love likes to do. And you could see it with Matt LaFleur's offense. He went back to what, the, the concepts love liked in the passing game over and over. And that's great when you're first, you know, evolving in a system and breaking out in a system, it makes a lot of sense, but I just want to see them do it again on film. And I think there's a little bit less risk for me with Herbert. Dave, I actually think Herbert's a quarterback now just because of how much I expect them to run the ball, how much more I expect them to run the ball. And do they even have a starting wide receiver <laughs> at this point? You on know, roster. Um, I Quinn can't Johnson is it. He's yeah. the top wide receiver. If they move on from Keenan Allen, obviously. I think they're going to get somebody in the draft too. Yeah, they can't. Why would they move on from Keenan Allen? Like, come on. I, they're, I, I, well, because he costs a lot of money. So if he restructures and stays, that's perfectly reasonable. And so, uh, and that's probably what what's going to happen. Yeah, I hope so. What I was saying was, uh, Justin Herbert is a guy that's now into me in the camp where if I draft Justin Herbert, I have to draft a backup. I agree. 
but you can't take away how talented he is and, and something that Dan didn't mention about all the the problems that he had last year. He also broke a finger on his not throwing. Right. Hand. We don't know how that necessarily impacted him. And really the offensive line falling apart. It's, I feel like it's the second year in a row where he had to play behind a substandard offensive line and his numbers stunk. In fact, it did. It was two years yep. in a row because he didn't even average 20 fantasy points in 2022, but he started 2023 averaging just over 25 fantasy points per game in his first seven games. He was off to a very good start. If that offensive line stays strong, and that's what Harbaugh is going to try and do. He's going to try and make it a very physical offense, physical team all the way around, but mm -hmm. certainly build on that offensive line, try and make it better, fortify it, add depth, all to protect the quarterback and also open lanes for his run game. I think the biggest knock against Herbert is that he might not throw as much, and then we don't know who he's throwing to. That's a conversation that we're having in late February. By the time we get to August, we'll have a pretty good idea of who he's throwing to. We might even like who he's throwing to. Oh, yeah. And if we're not getting him as a top six or seven quarterback, then I might be very much down for drafting Justin Herbert at, you got him at 80th overall? Is that? Yeah, no. somewhere in that range. Somewhere. So that's round seven. And then, like Adam said, taking a second quarterback later on, just in case Herbert does stink and he's back to where he was so, in 2022. I'll push back on that because Adam mentioned it too, Dave. You got to get a second quarterback if you draft somebody like Herbert. There were 16 quarterbacks selected in this draft, Adam. So, like, why do I have to get a quarterback from a game theory standpoint if we're in a one quarterback league and there's 12 teams and only four had backups in this league? Like, I'm not worried about that. There's only 16 quarterbacks off the board. That means there's a lot of quarterbacks in the waiver wire. So, I'm going to be fine playing the match really? and streaming. A quarterback yeah. the waiver wire that you think could I mean look Jared Goff I didn't is on mentioned one name. I'm not I don't care about one name when I do this strategy. I'm looking at matchups per week and streaming quarterbacks and injuries that are gonna happen in a position. So yeah. 16 half the starting quarterbacks aren't even rostered in this league. Two yeah. quarterbacks that were not taken in this mock, who I am positive Dan would be happy to have. Sure. Jared Goff. Yep. And Baker Mayfield. And here's no, the third. Jared Goff at home. I'll play you know, like, I'm not Sorry. worried about it. Hey, Aaron Rodgers is out there. And we didn't draft any rookies, so Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. You forgot yeah, about the goat. Wonderful. You didn't even mention the goat, Daniel Jones. Nah, nah, just <laughs> so I, I, and you, you make an interesting point. You make That's an interesting perfect. point where you don't necessarily have to draft that second quarterback if you get Herbert or anyone. In an my interesting mind. point, but yeah. But when you talk about a guy like Jared Goff, we've seen two years in a row. He, at best, he's probably going to be twenty ten. Right, no, but, yeah, but you're not looking at it like. But you're not looking at it like that. You're not looking at it. I want my QB one. I start him every week. You're looking at someone to stream, and you play him in the home matchups where he's probably I, in the. Are you going to roster him all year where you can do that? Because you're no, not going to be the only one that wants Jared Goff in home matchups. So you're going to have to be other. Roster. I know, but there's going to be other quarterbacks that pop up and are streamable sure. based on matchups. They will. Yeah. Um, all righty, and that's uh, that's it for today's show. Someone wanted me right, to you justify. Can't just, you can't make you justify your picks. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to justify Brees Hall second overall. That yeah, needs a lot of the, the picks I saw on your board need a justification. Go ahead, you pick, for another board time. back up. Pick one pick. One pick the board I back up. I mean, I'll start with just Brees Hall two overall. That was bad. I mean, I listen, the yeah, the yeah, Instagram be comments, yeah. like the pitchforks and torches were out for you for oh, taking yeah. Brees Hall at number two. Overall, Jalen Hurts and right? Jalen Hurts in the second pick of fourth round is a terrible pick. Jalen Hurts has no chance of running for 16 touchdowns again next year. They might even outlaw the push push. Then you're really screwed there. Uh, Mark That's Andrews, big, early tight end capital. No, I'm mostly giving crap with these. Just let me roll. Uh, uh, Mark Andrews, no. early tight end capital. Terrible to dump there. What is he doing? <laughs> Khalil <laughs> Herbert. Or Aaron Jones. I mean, the oldest running backs. But Quinton Johnson, he's using picks on Quinton Johnston. Deshaun Watson is on his roster. What is the point of that? Well, he loves uh, Deshaun Watson. Well, you already said Adam, Jalen Hurts. He uses early fourth round capital on Jalen Hurts and dumps a late round pick on Deshaun Watson. People, Adam need, to, does. people need to look at what Deshaun Watson. Israel Abaganda. Are you kidding me with that pick? Uh, who's my second pick? My I, who was my first pick it was Brees Hall. Yeah, I know. Totally hand know. <laughs> Deshaun Watson. People need to look at the fantasy points that he scored in his games before you start crapping on the Deshaun Watson pick. He wasn't horrible, but he also I missed a lot. Now he's coming off shoulder surgery. We saw how well that worked for Cam Newton. I like On this the plus side. Um, he's got an amazing wide receiver one in Amari Cooper. And yeah. Right. I, I do like this team quite a bit, actually. I, I don't have, if, if you want to make me justify Brees no, Hall as the second pick over the wide receivers, I understand that. But 
as the second so one. Yeah. I think you should. Why did you take Brees Hall over, yeah, over Jefferson and Lamb, Justin and Hill. Jefferson and Tyreek Hill? Who's okay? Justin Jefferson. I don't know who his quarterback's going to be. That could be two fantasy points per game worse. Uh, Tyreek Hill. He's going to be 31 this year, I believe. And I, I do see it evening out a little bit between him and uh, Jalen Waddle. CD Lamb has never done what he did in in 2023 he, he wasn't even close to that good before jamar chase it's kind of a secret like that's should be out there when t higgins is on the field i have to do the numbers i have to do the research but i'm pretty sure when t higgins is on the field jamar chase is not the number one reserve. he's not quite that super elite he's still great uh i still think the most valuable player in fantasy football is an every down running back that's really talented that catches a lot of passes Brees Hall absolutely has the ability to be the most valuable player in fantasy football. He is, I mean, in this day and age, is there anyone else that fits that description other than Christian McCaffrey? Super talented, every down back, catches a lot of passes. I, I mean, don't potentially think every that. running back that was taken in the first 13 no. picks of this draft, Bijan, except for Jonathan Taylor. Not Jameer Gibbs. He splits. Bijan Robinson still gets absolutely a still catches a ton of passes. He doesn't get a ton of work, though. He, he he's like two hundred. He's like catches a lot of passes. Yes, he doesn't get a ton of work. If you're gonna go running back, I'm good with Brees Hall. I just have no no world am I taking Brees Hall over any of those three receivers. He's the only one. He and McCaffrey are the in only PPR ones. league. He, but he's but he has a he's a huge advantage in PPR leagues. Now, could he throw to him less? Yeah, they will throw to him less. Like they're gonna have a competent quarterback who's gonna throw the ball downfield. But I still think he's he's among the leaders in catches at running back. So, like, to say it's, it's PPR. I think the craziest thing you just said is that they're definitely going to have a competent quarterback throwing the football. Knowing the Jets' history, you think Aaron Rodgers will definitely going to play all the games next year? No, but you're, they're going to be better at quarterback, I would assume. You hope, you would They'll hope. be better at backup quarterback. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, right. Uh, thank but you for your time. Go ahead, I had a, I had a couple, um, you know, grammar spelling errors in the draft board, and <laughs> When I was typing in Brees Hall, I actually double checked that one because I was like, did he actually take him? Then I went to the website. I was like, he actually did take him there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think it's I think it's the right pick. I, I think uh I don't think it's the wrong pick if you take one of those four wide receivers, but Brees Hall uh to me is you know has the McCaffrey potential. Not the McCaffrey of the Panthers, but the McCaffrey of the 49ers. He could he could average 23, 24 fantasy points per game. It wouldn't shock me in a full PPR league. Okay, everybody. Um, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll talk about the sophomore wide receivers. And uh, that that will do it. Uh, gotta go. I got to go call my best friend and yell at him. <laughs>